That's how I do check a lot of my venting is with um, with playing and using my ear and I'll use a tuner as well. Does your saxophone have stuffy notes? Are there issues with intonation? Are they having trouble hitting certain notes? That could be a result of poor key venting. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how to adjust that and make your saxophone play better. Let's get started. Hi, Mark. Great to see you. <laughs> thanks for coming by today, and thanks for bringing me your beautiful YTS62 tenor saxophone. I've gathered this is the kind of thing that not everybody even knows that it is something you could do to improve how the horn plays. Like, even people who are very good players may not even know that this is something that could be done to improve it. That is true. I've had many players come in that are having issues with their horns, and they might not even know their issues, but they, I get the horn and I, and I say, man, you've got some, there's some problems with these notes. They're not speaking, or maybe they're not playing in tune, and they don't even know that that's how the instrument is. They just how they've played it, and that's how it's, it's been for a decade or longer. And so I do some things, and what I'm talking about is key venting. And key venting is how far the keys open up. And you came to me because of my other video where I talked about key venting. Was that the two minute tone builder? Yes. Which wasn't even focused on key venting, but I, that happened to just come up because. You mentioned that as one of the things that could affect your tone on certain notes when you're trying to even out. And, and you specifically even mentioned that D. Yeah. And I was like, oh yeah, I can like not only hear, but feel it too. And so I'm really curious to see how that, uh, how that changes. That's so common. Um, most, so when, when they build these saxophones, they just have a, a felt bumper and they put those in and then they send them down the line and, then, and they ship them out and that's what you get. Um, so a lot of times you actually will have to cut the bumper to shorten it so the key opens up far enough. Hmm. Um, same thing with just the, the corks on the, on the keys. They just have a size they put on and it gets put on and the horn plays pretty good and they send it on and, and you never know the difference. Uh, I think one of the things you mentioned was the side C was playing a lot more clear than the middle C. Yes. Um, so that tells me that the B key and the G key need to come up a little bit. Um, and I'm going to play it and demonstrate it and kind of show you what we're talking about. I was going to say also, so this seems to me like similar to how uh, a guitar would come off the assembly line, but then it needs a setup also. And if you right. get a good guitar tech to actually get it set up right, it plays so much better. Right. Um, Even an expensive guitar. Yeah, um, absolutely. I Some of the most expensive saxophones made need a lot more work than just a simple setup, but they do need setups hmm. um, at minimum, where they'll just use a, min a minimal amount of glue and just clamp those pads and then, and they're sealing, sort of, hmm. send them out and then, and that's what you get. And if you send a horn to me, I say, well, okay, in some cases, I'm taking the horn completely apart. I am addressing key fitting issues. I'm adding glue to the pad cups and just um, almost like a mini overhaul to make them play well. Hmm. And you'd be surprised at the amount of horns I've seen that cost a lot more than like a horn like this. These Yamahas are set up really well and, and they typically use almost an appropriate amount of glue to make them to where you can adjust them. But um, let's move on to the key venting. I'm going to do a few things here. I'm going to show you guys how to do this as well. Um, also, this is something that you may just want to have a technician do because there are some risks as far as damaging the finish. Um, also, if the corks on are really old, the glue could be a little brittle and you could actually pull corks off. Isn't a big deal. I mean, replace the corks. But if you're not comfortable doing that, then um, I would probably let a technician do it. Um, so this video could be a good video for technicians that are wondering about how to get key venting right as well. That's how I do check a lot of my venting is with, um, with playing and using my ear, and I'll use a tuner as well. Because sometimes you do have a key that's vented way too far open, and it's maybe um, not throwing the intonation off, but it's just throwing the, the note itself off, just letting too much through that tone hole. And it's, it may not actually be throwing the intonation off, but it is just with what's happening. Your, the intonation is getting thrown off. 
if that makes sense. I'm curious on one other note in the horn that I've noticed, uh, the high D seems to be more sharp than when I play the other palm fingerings. Is okay. it possible that that one uh, is because of key venting or is that um, just probably me not, you know, having the right embouchure? That, it could be both, um, or either way. Um, so my Bush or Soprano, which um, maybe I should show that real quick, but it's, I mean, it's a, it's a Soprano sax, so it's got tiny tone holes. And those, when I first got that horn done, um, the, the palm key notes were really sharp. And so I actually closed those down where they're just opened. I mean, just like, they're hardly open at all, but that's how far they have to open for them to be in tune. So yeah, that, those particular notes were hmm. really sharp. And then I brought those keys down to where they're just like, you just crack them open, the notes play and it's in tune and, it's, and it sounds really good. So yeah, keys can, in certain cases, can be open too far. A lot of times people, like they might play a horn, like this horn, compared to my con, the keys are quite a bit closed. And so you might pick up my con and go, man, and plus the, the body on it's just fat. It's got a huge bore on it. So you like, compared to this horn like that, you feel like your hands like this and the, plus the keys open really far. And, and if you don't understand it, you're gonna say, that's just uncomfortable, it's too far. But the horn plays well and you can play it. And it's, you might take a little bit to get used to, but once you're used to it, it's pretty comfortable. Okay, so we're gonna play this saxophone and we are going to check some of the key venting. And I'm gonna show you some of the ways I check them when I play test them after I'm done working on them. Um, I'm gonna focus on that middle C but this will apply to um, all the notes on the horn. Um, so let's start with just playing um, maybe just a C major scale. So I played that with the side C. Um, I noticed some kind of weird stuffiness in like the F and E. Um, maybe the D a little bit as well. Um, some of the things I'm going to do um, for that middle C is I'll, I'll play the um, the middle finger C, which is the, what Mark was one of the concerns he had. A huge difference. That middle C is really stuffy, so that tells me that the that the G key and the B key need to be raised. The best way to do it, assuming you have plenty of material on these bumper corks is just to remove material. Sometimes you'll get um, times where these bumper materials have been, re there's already just hardly any material there and you'll actually have to bend the, the feet up a little bit. That's something that a technician should definitely do. Uh, removing a little cork is something you can do. Um, I would be very careful because I'm going to use sandpaper. Um, so there's a few things that you need to worry about. First, this is really smooth, so that shouldn't scratch your saxophone. However, we're going to be getting in some pretty tight areas, and that the sandpaper could drag against a key and hurt a key. I would recommend actually just removing this key. That way you have really easy access to those two corks. Also, you'll notice this front F key, this B key is pretty much touching it. So, once you remove, raise this B key up, it's going to start bumping against this F key. So you may have a ton of re material removed from the, the B key, but it's still getting stopped here. So you're e either going to have to remove some cork from up here on this, on this Yamaha, this type of horn, or you may end up having to, to bend the key just a little bit to adjust for the, the raised key height. And that kind of depends on a few factors, like how, how far do you want this this F key raised. Like if it's already raising a ton, sometimes you might want a little lower, which actually can help with altissimo. Um, so let's let's just sand a, a cup little bit here and just see where we get. I'm gonna go ahead and take this key off because that's the right way to do it. Sandpaper I use is 320 grit sandpaper. Um, you could use 220, but I like to use a 320. Just it's a little bit um, takes off a little bit less material, and it's not as aggressive on the cork, so it's actually a little harder to pull corks off. But 
I use a 320 grit sandpaper. And I'm going to show you a few ways to prevent scratching. Um, first of all, let's just take this key off. You notice my fingers kind of behind the key? That's a dangerous box. If this screwdriver slips, I could easily get stabbed. Um, I'm not at my bench right now, so this is um, a little more difficult. I don't have my workbench to kind of help balance things out. So that key was, a, that screw was a little tight to get out, but now that it's loose, it's... I'm just going to set this to the side in the safe spot. So another way to prevent scratching is I've got some of this painter's tape and so we can just put this either under the key feet here or just if you just want to kind of cover some stuff up so you don't accidentally risk uh, scratching the instrument. I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit under the key feet that way when I drag that sandpaper it doesn't scratch it. There's no risk. Although with that sandpaper I use the backing, it's really soft and I've, I've never had a horn get scratched. You do have to be careful though because what I'm using is this um, one inch strip sandpaper, which is fine. You can also just use a regular sandpaper, but what I'll, I'm gonna tear it into a little strip like that. And you just wanna double check and make sure there's no nothing on the back that could scratch the saxophone. Even though we have tape on it now, so it won't really matter that much. So to raise this key, I'm just gonna put this sandpaper under the cork and pull it through a little bit like that. Now this will get time consuming with that tape because you'll have to take that tape off to see where you're at. Um, and this is what'll, if you don't have the sandpaper, you'll notice like that really didn't take off much material. I'm gonna go ahead and leave that tape off because I've done this enough and I'm also keeping that sandpaper kind of um, or the corks kind of centered in the sandpaper that way I'm not running on the sides of the sandpaper which could risk scratching and I am kind of if you um, look on this side of the key I'm kind of pushing up on it just slightly just so the sandpaper has a little bit of pressure and this is just going to be a little time consuming eventually you'll get a little bit of lost motion in this key where there's a little bit of movement like that and that means you've taken off some cork um, I'm gonna go ahead and take some cork off and then get back to you and I'll show you how it sounds once I've got that key opened up okay so I've got a little um, bit of material moved from this cork and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to remove some material from the A key cork because that'll drop this whole key mechanism down and remove that little bit of lost play that you can see right there. Um, so what I'm going to do is, is, I'll, is I will um, remove that key play by removing material there and then I'm going to test it because that's what you have to do. You have to make, take a little bit of material off, test it, see where you're at. If it's still stuffy, you keep taking material off. Eventually, um, this B flat key, this one and one B flat is going to start bumping against this adjustment screw here and there'll be a little bit of key play there because this key is raised up enough. Now you have to compensate by raising the lower stack, which when I was playing this horn, these like the F and the E felt stuffy as well as the D, but those two keys felt stuffy. So that, that means that, um, that the D is and the E are probably too low as well. So once that's raised up, we're just going to balance it out. And then at a certain point, you'll have the horn really well balanced. And that's where, that's one thing we didn't really check is that F, middle F key F sharp. Because lots of times these two keys will be a little too low. And they need to be raised up so that key speaks nicely. So I'm going to continue with this and remove that key, uh, material and then give it a quick play test. I've got the key venting opened up and I've done a little bit of play testing to check it out and I've got everything really even. I took this guard off and then I did the same thing here and removed material from the bumpers here. And now everything seems like it's playing really even. I'm really happy with it. Um, this video is meant to be more informative because things can happen. Um, when I, when I, actually once I got the key venting I realized the side key wasn't open up far enough. And when I went to um, 
removed from material from there, I actually pulled that cork off. So I'll have to put a new cork on it. Isn't a big deal. Okay, let's play it and see how it sounds. <laughs> using the middle finger C, everything sounded really even to me. Yeah, big difference. Um, and then I'll compare it to the side C. So, what do you think? Oh yeah, that's a huge difference from before. Okay. Yeah, I'm really happy with it. Same thing when I open up that lower stack, um, like that middle finger C is... Um, it's always going to be a little bit of a stuffing up because it's not perfectly vented. You're you're fighting. I mean, that's F sharp. Now you're 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 killing the venting with that, with the by activating the F sharp key with this with the E key. So I mean, that is F sharp, but that's really F sharp. So if you played F sharp like that, you've got a really nice vented instrument. Um, and that's why the side F sharp sounds so good because your venting is is really good. Hmm. That's closing your venting down. Um, but yeah, I think it's really good. Um, we'll we'll take a look at that low C and low and B, B and B flat, but I think that that kind of uh, took care of your issues. Yeah, man, that makes a huge difference. Yeah, so I'm happy. Um, Mark's been a good friend of mine. He plays bass, he plays trumpet, plays keyboards. He has, we play in like 15 different bands together. And I'm not kidding, we play in a lot of bands together. <laughs> We've known each other for decades. And Mark just started playing tenor sax probably... A month and a half ago. A month and a half ago. So yeah, he's come. And yeah, you wouldn't believe it if you heard him. I'm excited. I'm Scott Reed. I'm a woodwind repair technician. I play music professionally. I buy, sell, trade, and collect musical instruments. And now I have a YouTube channel. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe. Thanks, Mark. Glad to be here.